Hello and welcome to You Missed It! And it's you. This <laughs> can we restart? Wow! No, no, no. I had something in my head, and I we're going. We're, we are not Ooh. restarting. You're going to keep going. That's Ooh, cats on a bag. Oh, okay. There. That's what you get. That's the intro. That's the intro. Wow! So, <laughs> I stumbled. Man. Merry Christmas, I don't know. everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was trying to incorporate Christmas in there somehow, and it was just like brain fart. So. Uh, you're welcome, guys. Enjoy that one. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell. I might as well just go straight into the plug because uh, since I'm sucking ass over here at an intro, uh, if um, just uh, we're on uh, we're on Facebook. So if you want to find us, it's uh, you missed it uh, question mark. Uh, and on SoundCloud, we're you missed it podcast. Twitter, we're at why am I underscore podcast. And on YouTube, you missed it question mark podcast. And we're also on iTunes as well now. Okay, so barring that intro, I'll just say the film we're watching today, or I, it was my pick, is uh, Joyeux Noël. It's a film that came out uh, back in 2005, and it is a, it was directed by, um, sorry, it was uh, directed by Christian Carillon, and it stars a, a, a German, uh, German, French, and Scottish actors. Uh, so it's it's quite a diverse cast uh, starring uh, Benno Furman. I probably said that horribly. Uh, Guillaume Canet, uh, Daniel Bruhl, Diane Kruger, who is probably familiar to to quite a few people. Uh, Gary Lewis and Alex Ferns. Uh, the film had a budget of twenty two million. It's uh, box office. It only took home uh, just under eighteen million, so it didn't make a profit. Um, the film. Uh, also included one of the last appearances of uh, uh, Ian Richardson before his death. Uh, it was also nominated for Best Foreign Language Film at the Academy Awards that year. Uh, it's basic. Uh, the basic premise is that it was a it is a fictionalized account of the event of the Christmas truce in 1914 um, uh, it, during Christmas of 1914, and. Uh, basically, it was uh, the true event was uh, Wilhelm, uh, the German crown prince, sent uh, the lead singer of the Berlin Imperial Opera Company on a solo visit to the front line. So singing by the tenor um, to to the different uh, to the two regiments, right? Uh, sorry, to the two regiments led by French soldiers in their trenches who stood up and applauded. So that's just a dramatization of that true event. Uh, the film. Uh, I'll, I'll bring this up later. Uh, I'll bring something else up later, but that's the basic premise. Um, my opinion on the film, uh, I, I personally watched it when I was in uh, it, when I was in school in a French class. Uh, when you're in French immersion, they just make you watch a lot of French uh, French media. This was one that uh, that broke into the North American scene a, a little bit. Like it was it was one of those films where. It got uh, it got mostly critical, uh, a lot of critical. The critical reception was uh, wasn't too bad, but uh, overseas it didn't perform that well at the box office either. So it didn't do well financially, but critically it did. It did uh, not too bad. Uh, I personally clung. That was you watch so many French films when, especially when you're learning French, they just want to expose you. And uh, that was one of the ones that stuck out for me just because I found it very unique at the time. It was very different than a lot of uh, the films I'd watched in French or French cinema. It it just felt kind of unique. And I was also a big history buff, so I had a soft spot for that. Uh, It's... But on a rewatch, I will point this out before I go around and get opinions from everybody. Uh, I do have a a bit of a difference of opinion on it just in the sense that I didn't realize what the I I didn't remember the pacing being the way it is and I felt that the pacing was a little uh sluggish uh this time around before I I actually I never really noticed that but now that's the one thing that I've kind of picked up on that's a difference of opinion for me otherwise I still very much like the film so I'll start off on my left and we'll start with Alex. What did you think? 
Actually, just one thing before we get started. Yeah. Uh, we also forgot to mention that you can mail anything oh, to yeah. Jack McQuiston's yeah. address. Give him I'll, some gifts. Oh, for fuck's yeah. Tip your postman. Maybe yeah. he'll give Sorry, you the address. Sorry, that should have been, been my intro. Right. I should have just said, yeah, you missed uh, Jack's address at... Yeah. We'll post it up on YouTube. That's right. We'll have Our a live event. Our most flourishing social media hub is Jack's front Jack's door. Jack's address. Yeah. The front door. Yeah, yeah mail exactly. It. Yeah. Send whatever you want. He'll love your gifts. Yeah. Your yeah. presence and your words. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, Alex, um, <laughs> <laughs> like a dead rat wrapped in a Nazi flag. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we're still waiting. Guys. Although we're always <laughs> referencing that. <laughs> Wrong war. Uh, <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. I like the film. I had known about this incident, probably heard about it in high school in history class, but more recently I heard about it last year when I listened to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History podcast. He did a six-part series on the First World War, and this this incident of Christmas 1914, I'm almost certain that's in the second part of the six-part series, mm. and it, it, it just blew me away, not only to hear it, but to watch the film and see that event dramatized. Now, I, I went into this completely blind, mm. hadn't heard of it, didn't know this was going to be your pick. I probably wasn't listening when you said this was going to be your pick, and I oh, apologize. Okay. No worries. But it was a great film. There were a lot of little moments in there, a lot of little humanity moments, because in war, of course, emotions are always high. Yeah. So I want to say it's easy as an actor to play those em those emotional moments really high, even mm -hmm. though it's not really. It just looks like it is. But a lot of the the little moments of humanity you see come out when they're the, the French and the German soldiers are kind of looking at each other in that uneasy way. And they're like, yeah, you want some wine? Do you want a cigarette here? Here's a picture of my wife. <laughs> and they're all a little bit uneasy about yeah. it, but that it, it's those refreshing little moments of humanity because after that incident, it was just total war after that. Yeah. You never saw anything like this again. Yeah. And I want to say in any war, because I'm history buff as well, but yeah. I can't remember I don't think exactly. anything's ever been documented like this yeah. before. Um, not that I'm aware of from everything that I know. It, nothing mm. like this. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there are ceasefires, but they're official. Like That's they're, right. They're for real. Something like this where just soldiers on their own That's like, right. and their, yep. their immediate superiors just deciding to kind of stop for a bit mm -hmm. and this the spontaneity of it because they did actually right like there that was the real event and uh there was a uh singer singing yeah. for christmas and it was the opposed the enemy applauding and then it had the, there was that camaraderie there that that shared moment and that typically uh there's no documented cases of that that i know of just yeah, regular old ceasefires yeah music is the great unifier no yeah. matter what music it is. Yeah. Like, well, you know, maybe it helped that they were all European. So Christmas was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know that that would play in a place where Christmas doesn't matter. Um, Playing but, Beyonce songs or something. Yeah, no. like, yeah, or it's, yeah. That. And especially you know, like, yeah, I feel like it was like the perfect time and place for something like that to happen. It's, it's, it's so unlikely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And religion at that point in time really helped yeah. as well. Yeah. Because the, the Scottish preacher, he was, he was speaking Latin at that point. And yeah, I'm, and everybody understood Latin. Yeah, everybody yeah. understood him, which yeah. I thought yeah, was amazing. Yeah, I noticed that too. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. so Latin and music both transcend yeah. language. Yeah. Well, because of religion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, that's why they all knew that. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, but uh, that stuff was mostly the fictionalized aspect. So yeah, of course. A lot of the stuff, like the inter all the interpersonal stuff, obviously just... Uh, a story they created but yeah. the event itself is so uh, so it, it's so unbelievable that's why mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah. You, you can't even you don't know how it would have happened so it's a best guess kind of thing right yeah mm -hmm. and uh, as to the sluggish pace i think they at points they had to go that slow because you don't know if you've never heard of this event yeah you wouldn't know if all of a sudden somebody's going to get itchy trigger finger and yeah. just pull up a gun yeah. and then boom, it's on right yeah. there in the, on the field. Yeah. But luckily that didn't happen, yeah. but I, you're just waiting for it. I was, yeah. I knew the oh, incident, for sure. but you're just, yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I guess, yeah, you never know when it's officially going to be over. Because it feels like it just kept getting extended or like just it, it, there were longer periods where they're, no, eh, let's not do anything for a bit longer kind of, you know. People were enjoying mm -hmm. the peace. Yeah, and you didn't want it to end. No. But like all things, it does eventually end. And it's a real party pooper when it does end. But at least yeah. they had that that good time. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And yeah, I guess maybe because it starts off so quickly and so uh, mm -hmm. so strong. And then after that, it's like, uh, it's like, it's still not over. It's still not over. So yeah. maybe I just noticed that more this time. Maybe that's why. But yeah. 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 So uh, what about you, Jack? Um, yeah, no, I, I overall, I did enjoy the movie. Um, once it got to the actual meat of the story where they are, you know, being they're together and they're sharing their their side of their stories showing pictures you know celebrating christmas together and all that that's when yeah, i think it really got the most investing because you don't see this in war movies ever mm -hmm. which i thought was really refreshing to see just in terms of the scope of war movies to see both all three sides humanized mm -hmm. usually in most war films there as the priest in that one scene there's they always frame it as there's the good side, and these are the evil Satanists, pretty mm -hmm. much. Well, it's right. not just the priests; it's the children at the beginning too, reciting yeah, propaganda. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. I was going to bring that up too. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That was meant to just kind of establish this is what we're taught. This is what we're told. Exactly. Yeah. Just like in Justice for All, when you hear exactly the kids liked it a lot more. Mm -hmm. here, though. And I, I yeah, I think it was mm -hmm. a little more. Effective. Well, because they spliced it in. It's all ki uh, kids speaking three different languages, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah, I, I dug. That yeah, no, I dug that a lot. Film, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I really, uh, I really liked that. Um, I don't want to go too, into too many details um, in my initial sum up of it. Um, but I thought, yeah, the performances all around were really great. I thought the, the story was great. I had some issues with actually the directing of the movie. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that kind of maybe goes into your um, pacing issue earlier because I did. Yeah. There were a few things that kind of did throw me a little off. Like, but uh, um, well, just in terms of um, uh, certain how it's directed, how in terms of pacing, in terms of how it's um, certain scenes flow into the other, and certain things feeling a little. Um, choppy, I guess. Not like, not choppy, but sort of um, kind of leaves you hanging, you know. In certain times, like certain scenes, I'm like, I, I'll be honest, I was a little shocked of how the movie ended, especially where it ended. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, we're ending now. Oh, I didn't. I personally did not feel a true climax. It just sort of mm -hmm. felt like it just sort of drifted off and it, it was over. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of one thing I noticed um, that kind of threw me off a little it felt a little incomplete really? at times um but that's just that i hold that more in the how the execution was because i felt like the story like everything else the story the music the acting and all that mm -hmm. was really strong yeah. um but i felt like whoever was handling it wasn't up to chops with to say the story was i felt mm -hmm. like he mm -hmm. sort of I, i'll just do a little quick sum up i felt like the director or whoever film this did a serviceable job mm -hmm. where you know there he just basically got his his coverage you know he shot it well mm -hmm. but i would not say this movie is memorable visually i think it's more the only thing that really stands out with this movie is the premise right. and just mm -hmm. seeing it executed and you're just mm -hmm. like this is really interesting but in terms of <laughs> as a filmmaking for, as a filmmaker nothing really made me go oh wow it was just like oh okay Standard, mm -hmm. basic filmmaking 101. You can learn this on YouTube in five minutes of how to cover how to coverage all that those shots. The mm -hmm. only thing that I really liked was that, and I think you made note of that too, mm -hmm. is um, there was one transition with a fire. Oh pit. shit! I was gonna mention that. Um, yeah. And I was like, that was mm -hmm. really good. But, I love that. But that Wait. was really it. Yeah. The transition with the. The fireplace. When um, Diane Kruger awesome. goes to see, um, I can't remember his name, but the tenor singer in that mm -hmm. room, and they're singing, they're sitting on the bed, and then it. Uh, by the fire, white shot, and there's a fireplace just sitting yeah. in the background. It fades to black, but the fire still stays lit, mm. and then it fades back, and, oh, yeah. it, and it shows that they're, they're now in bed. Yeah, um, that was really cool. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> um, that's the only thing visually that I remember. I felt like with something like this, there was so many th things you could just show story wise, visually. What I think they kind of missed those opportunities like there could have been some really really good shots to kind of sum up the whole story 
I think, or at least would have given this um, movie a little bit more oomph mm -hmm. that I felt like was slap, was was missing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's on the director more than anything, because mm -hmm. um, everything else it was spoon fit, and this is like movie gold in terms yeah, of making yeah. in terms of storytelling there's so many good things you could do with it but the execution I thought was a little eh and I think that's why it, it I think it's underrated and why it's, I don't think it's really not a lot of people see uh, talk about it because um, it didn't doesn't really live much of an impact as, as a mm. filmmaking it's just mm. the story itself I think is really what's the draw because mm. after this yeah. I really don't have a, a desire to go see it again unless it's just whether it's for Christmas or just to r look at something, a uh, fictionalized version of history. Mm -hmm. That's really the only draw. Besides that, I have no real desire to watch it again for anything else besides that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's sort of why it didn't go up. But anyways, that's sort of... Overall, I still enjoyed the movie. Mm -hmm. I did like it, but those are my main faults that I saw. So Just the filmmaking mm -hmm. aspect. Yeah, I thought it was a little just standard. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ryland? Well, um, Jack has some interesting points, <laughs> but uh, hmm? yeah. the, 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 there's no need to laugh. There's, there's no okay. joke coming. It's I, okay. I thought, was, I thought that was a takedown. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 slam, no, no. Jack slam. slam. is on. No, well, I mean, She's I can. She's on fire. <laughs> She's heating up. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I can, I can understand, uh, like, what you mean from a production aspect. Like, it's not, it's certainly not a spectacle film. It's not grandiose. It's not epic. It's not heroic. It's just kind of a snapshot of this historical moment in time, or dr dr dramatic snapshot of this, uh, of this moment. And kind of more, I was far more drawn to the, um, the uh, emotional aspects mm -hmm. than uh, anything else, like more, yeah. kind of like, kind of like along the lines of what Alex was saying, like a, a glimpsing into the, into the moments of humanity and kind of asking yourself, you know, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to do the right thing? What does it mean to forge a connection with somebody, like however brief, and kind of exploring that under the under the um, overarching uh, dark cloud that is, you know, a massive war. Yeah. Uh, is it's just fascinating it's kind of it's like it's like hope blooming in an environment where there, it shouldn't be yeah but it does nonetheless and it's it's beautiful and inspiring and it's also sad because you know and everybody involved knows that it's going to end it's going to end soon and to me the um as far as the um the what you were saying about the pacing um, I can kind of see what you mean about that, but at the same time, I can feel like it can relate to the story as well because, like, they're almost the ones holding back the inevitable yeah. ending. Yeah, and that's like every kind of time you think, oh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's over or something like that. They kind of they go, exactly. no, 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 we've changed. Yeah, we don't want this to end. Kind of, yeah, thing. So and I, yeah, it and fits a tone. Also, Jack, your point about like how it feels incomplete, and I mean it because it, it 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 kind of is. Because it's it's not the end of the story. It's yeah, not. I, I was gonna say that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from there, but it's more or less the, the next step would have been back to war. No, no, and I get that. Yeah, um, and they and they establish that that's what everyone's doing. Yeah, and no, no, no. They no, don't no. need you don't need to get any grimmer than that. It's enough yeah. of a downer already. Yeah, and that's no, no. I didn't mean incomplete in terms of like I wanted to see. No, 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 no. I'm not saying yeah. that, but I'm. Uh, but you sounded like you kind of wanted more elaboration in the end, and I feel like just kind of just lightly touching off and and implying what everybody already knows happens was more than sufficient in this case. Yeah, and ending mm. on on the song that also kind of brought them together because that was the kickoff song mm. as yeah. well that kind of got everybody to to listen and mm. to and to start making that connection. Yeah. That was and it was a it was a song they learned from the Scots. It's not even a German mm. song. Yeah, or and and uh, I should um, really clarify though. It's not so much what they did in terms of the ending it was more or less this the execution of it which i thought was a little lacking no and that's, i mean that's the incomplete it's like i felt like this could have been this whole ending i like how they ended with the song and them drifting off i like back to yeah. war that yeah. was great i'm not saying like the story and everything is great mm -hmm. it's just the execution of the of what you're showing no me, and i, I, I know what you're lacking. saying as well it's like that's the the way it's made is very understated, but the mm -hmm. emotional and intellectual weight of the story still carries it. I mean, it'd oh, be yeah. interesting to see if they had kind of gone the 
the extra mile. I mean, you're, that's more up your alley than mine, so I'm sure you'd be able to offer yes. some more suggestions. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, you have a point, but I, I, it, for me, it, it wasn't it a worked. negative factor at all. Yeah. Mm. For me, it's, it's just like this could have been a lot of the emotional, um, to me, uh, uh, moments could have had a little bit more impact. I felt like if it was executed a little better, in terms of just framing, pacing, what shots, when to cut, what to cut. It probably would have garnered a little more tension if it had been had. I'm not even saying for tension. I'm just saying just basic framing. You know, you could have executed it, um, certain shots a little better, or there was an, an insert I thought was missing at times. Mm. Um, for like one scene, I actually, I brought up a little, like, you could have used an insert of that. That could have been a little helpful, or at least to make it a little bit more important. Because that, for example, um, there's a, there's a, a clock uh, throughout this whole movie mm-hmm. and the first time you see it is in a two shot where it's in the bottom corner and yet it's the most important thing they're talking about mm-hmm. an insert of the clock yeah would have been very helpful it's moments mm-hmm. like that there's such subtle things so you that kind of just wish they were a little more thorough a little yeah. bit like a, like there's just little things i'm like mm, I, like actually i will say probably the weakest part of the whole movie in my opinion was um the opening war scene um interesting i, I thought okay. that was the most like i was i even just wrote it i wrote war scene meh because mm-hmm. i i was like <laughs> deep dude deep um, criticism a little and again all it comes down to is the execution right mm-hmm. the shots were i didn't think they blended well together i thought it was more put shots in a blender and see what happens <laughs> um at times and that's where i meant by the execution like like i said none of it was bad yeah. Right. No, there was nothing like this was a badly shot film. It was just this was just the potential was there. Yeah. I don't know that that sequence yeah. was just really feelsy for me too because you have this lieutenant who's like who's basically like just do what I tell you and we'll all get home for Christmas and he knows that's bullshit as mm. he's saying it and all of his men in the back yeah. of their mind probably know it's bullshit too but mm. they have no choice and, but to yeah, believe but, it but, but and like, that is kind of what's in the back of my head yeah. while I'm mm. watching that. Oh yeah, me too. Um, and that, again, that's just that's the story and I I've not criticized the story once. It's been really good. I'm, it's just uh, you're it's, saying the shots. It's in all that. the in the execution how it was put together i thought like i said i thought it for something i felt like this big and this yeah. awesome of a story or this it was again you just it felt like a it was a direct or for hire type of job right, right. they just mm. get somebody to get the job done and make sure it looks good yeah that's basically yeah. about it that's sort of my biggest thing with it so you would have preferred if somebody had gone in with an actual vision of this yes. movie rather I, than yeah. being handed this movie and just making it yes okay yeah i um I think uh, it makes sense that those are your criticisms because every time we watch a movie, uh, you pretty much that's that's what you talk about every time, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the the main point of contention for you in any movie, whether it's good or great, mm-hmm. or uh, sorry, bad or or great, that that makes the difference for you in a lot of in a lot of films, right? So uh, yeah. everything we've watched, you brought it up every time. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised that that um, that's what you brought up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's that's fair because it it um, it's your point of criticism for mm-hmm. it. So it's uh, that's how it that's what impacts you in a movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas like I'm I'm dev I'm pretty uh, pretty obviously a story first kind of person mm-hmm. where I care about the writing and the emotional connection to characters yeah. above all else. They could yeah. shoot it like almost like mediocre. Sh- Shot in a really mediocre way, but as long as the story hits home, I'm mm. good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Story, uh, the, a, a stronger story um, and a little bit weaker mm-hmm. production value is much, much better than vice versa, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no doubt on that. Um, I've always, um, I'm always just in the mindset that, to me, filmmaking t- can take even a crap story or yeah. and even a great story and make it that much better, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Like certain movies have stood the test of time because of how it was executed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas there's probably hundreds of stories that given in the different hands, it could have been different. Right. Yeah. You know, right. and that's sort of how I always see things. I'm like, if this was in different hands or if someone else had an approach to this exact same, you didn't change anything. You didn't change mm-hmm. the script, the story or anything. It was just somebody else had a different eye for it. How could it have been any different? Could it yeah. have been worse? Could it have been better? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but obviously, it's. I'm just seeing what was presented, and you know, I'll I'll give my opinion on it. No, no, but I do see those. That's how I do see a lot of movies now. No, is, I know. I wasn't like that. criticizing you for. Oh no, no. I was. I was saying that like that. It makes sense because that's mm. how you watch films, and yes. I I get it. I get it from your perspective. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see that it's just a different way of watching movies. You yeah. watch it differently than I do. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand that criticism. Yeah. I just didn't notice it. That's the thing. At the end of the day, the stuff you're mentioning, 
it goes right over my head. It's mm. something that I don't know. It, mm. Unless it's really bad that it takes me out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will not notice it. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, like, I'll admit, there's some movies that look fantastic but are just the shits. Um, yeah, visually striking movies that don't have much substance to them story wise yeah. or character wise, that kills me. That kills Avatar, and, and that kills me too, because I'm just yeah, like Yeah, Avatar's a good I'm example. I'm like all this effort into something that has no weight to it is just as um irritating as yeah. you yeah. know, seemingly doing a lazy job of filmmaking. You need a balance. You need that good balance. You need and, a balance, yeah. And, and sure. it doesn't have to be like these big crane shots or anything like that or mm. Michael Bay the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um it's just overall execution I love how you just use Michael Bay as a verb explosion yeah or constant like yeah isn't that like a, a thing you can do in that goat game or whatever it's just a oh Michael yeah. Bay it just says Michael Bay he <laughs> is a a, he's just uh, yeah you could just use him as an adjective yeah. now uh, it's or a, as a verb rather the, the thing about like <laughs> filmmaking in general like my, my eye for it has always been that's always been in the front of my head even to this day I, I have an opinion on the film most filmmakers today anyway I feel you know a lot of them do most sta- mostly a standard job and yeah. i feel like that's sort of the tv way of approach of shooting a project Very much has so. crept into how films are made mm-hmm. um and this i feel tv's kind of king right now. that's the thing yeah. and but the approach of it you got it like in terms of like basics you, you know we have a scene here you can do your basics setup um like you know you you're, you're single your master mm-hmm. and your yeah. co- basic coverage mm-hmm. anyone can do that and i feel like that's sort of be spreading across all realms of media mm-hmm. and i felt like it's kind of cheapened movies for the most part yeah i felt like they don't a lot of films these days don't have the uh for lack of a bird uh cinematic quality to it mm-hmm. like and whenever i feel like that really is what's missing in film that I think needs to come back. Visionaries. Not even, not just visionaries. So some visionaries don't have an eye at all. Um, well, it depends. Yeah. Know, Kevin Smith is a, uh, to me is an example. He is a visionary, yeah. but his eye is shit. Right. Um, yeah. And and he'll admit that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Which is yeah. fine. Um, it's no. It's more or less it just. But I'm talking about like the Terry Gilliams and like yeah yeah and those yeah guys, and, and, right? that, and that's yeah. And yeah no that's a great example um, or like the I feel like visionaries last longer their movies last longer anyway mm-hmm. you know we still talk about Scorsese we still talk about Christopher right, Nolan right. and all that because of their approach to making a movie mm-hmm. yeah. whereas there's some movies where like it could have been directed by anybody and you wouldn't know yeah yeah um, and sometimes that works for the story but to me I feel like if every story kind of had an actual a vision of how it could mm-hmm. be executed particularly with films and movies i feel like um a more people would go to the cinema yeah, yeah because i hate it when i hear like oh i don't have to see this in a theater mm-hmm. and i yeah. hear that i hear that more and more often mm-hmm. yeah. and that to me is more of a concern because if movies are being made and most people don't see them as a good excuse to see them in theater then they should have never been made for the theater to begin with right yeah because if they're just for TV, then put them on TV. But then that's the thing is you're getting a lot of TV now mm-hmm. that it will work in a theater. Like people saying yeah. you're seeing Game of Thrones pop up in IMAX randomly and you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. because the yeah. because of how it's shot. You're like, yeah, that would, yep. that's perfect for, yeah. for the theater because it's just so large scale at this point. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like hardly TV anymore. It's surprising. Yeah. I would say like even a movie like... Um, I, it depends on your taste i think for films i think a lot of people they want to go they don't want to go see a slower paced film in the theater as much because they're like well why i, I don't need that extra surround sound or mm-hmm. or that bigger picture because it's mm-hmm. just like you know uh prestige film or this or that right mm-hmm. that's that's why a lot of people uh don't they that's why they'll see marvel movies in the theater yeah and, as opposed to like everything else mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. that's why like sight and sound i don't know if you saw this or whatever but they put uh twin peaks the return as their second favorite movie of 2017 yeah that's as funny. well for the same kind of reason right yeah it's so cinematic yeah that it's like it, it's beyond tv oh yeah, yeah. and and there and, yeah. and and yeah and, and there's been shows like that yeah um, for a while there's always been the odd ones or it's getting more and more or less odd and more and more of a norm of yeah. having these very cinematic uh, tv shows and i think because that's basically because of the digital technology with digital cameras mm-hmm. and all that yeah um you know you used to have to shoot TV shows on video and then you still have 35 millimeter film for films and mm-hmm. the quality difference is like night and day. Yeah. But now they're so close. Yeah. It really just comes down to lighting and framing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of where I come... And budget. And, and budget too, yeah. Um, but to me, you can make a $2 million movie look like $100 million mm-hmm. 
with all how you light it and how you frame it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And to mm-hmm. me, and, and your vision. Then yeah, but it, that that line is blurred so much now between it is. film and, and and that's where I, I sort of where I come yeah. in is more like there needs to be yeah. less of a blur. Mm-hmm. Well, be- I mean, Nef- like I think like Netflix is a prime example of that, just because they're they're pushing uh, movie level quality from from a lot of their content. That's what they want, mm-hmm. but obviously they don't they don't have a relationship. To distribute it in the theater or they typically don't or don't go that route because they it's their service yeah so I, you're getting movie quality mm-hmm. not always obviously a lot of their stuff is not great either but same with movies so they're uh they're having that quality but it's all at home it's uh you can watch it on your phone mm-hmm. so it's i think it's more to do with the the me like the medium the technology absolutely right? and just finding like the just the ways to less about the filmmaking is what yeah I'm saying. and to me it's just like you gotta with filmmakers at least to get people to go to the cinema you know to really think about shooting the your movies as if they were meant to be seen on a big screen mm-hmm. and yeah. i feel like that is a big thing that a lot of directors are not really thinking of, which yeah. granted, yeah. like the movies now have a, a forever life outside of the cinema, like mm-hmm. with as with Netflix watching your phone. So that does take into account. Yeah. But to me, like if, we, if this road kind of continues, there isn't going to be movies and TV anymore. It's all mm-hmm. just going to be one thing. Right. Which to me, actually, I think will hurt the film industry than actually help. Do you it. think so, though? I do. Because like at the same time, wouldn't that open the door? to having things that are now considered TV shows being able to have uh, to be played in a theater. It would open up avenues. They won't go to the theater. That's the thing. Right now. But you're saying they still, that... They still won't. Too long. Um, it's not... Because here's... No, well, no. Okay. Like, sorry. I guess, yeah. If it's... Yeah. We're saying like a season of a TV show. Sure. Yeah. But I'm mm-hmm. thinking more uh, these same... T- these TV companies that you're thinking... Like, mm-hmm. you think of as just that. Like, HBO and stuff like that. They're putting out... Uh, content that is an, a couple hours long, an hour and a half. They're mm. putting out documentaries. They're putting out all these things that would easily fit into the. Th- they would easily slot into the theater right alongside movies. Oh yeah. So I, I don't think it's going to kill the theater. I think that's like a doomsday prediction. No, that... I, no, uh, not in terms. Not. Um, I think you're not sort of hearing what I'm. What I'm trying to say. Um, it's more or less that if you make movies in terms of like, because there's a reason why they are have more. Um, say power for lack of a better term than yeah. TV does because the main draw of it is, is that you're getting um, you're an audience mm. to leave home to go somewhere to watch it yes. and you are paying to go see it yes. that alone makes film more important than TV what I mean by blurring is that if you make film less and less important in terms of going to the cinema going to the theater all of a sudden, the money and all of the uh, that they put into cinema in terms yeah. of paying actors will drop significantly, um, and that's where I'm a little worried. It's like, yeah, we can have movies on Netflix all the time, but if you lose that main money draw, which is, um, it still makes more money than online streaming. Mm-hmm. To me, like we hear Netflix being like five, like billions and billions of dollars in debt. That's not going to last. That's mm-hmm. eventually going to crash on them because. Uh, they can only get so many subscribers now that there's so many different streaming networks. They'll be basically becoming TV networks now. Yeah. With yeah, Netflix and the, Hulu. Yeah. It's yeah. eventually just going to become so spread out that all this money that they're putting into these big projects are eventually going to run out. Mm-hmm. And when you've gotten, and film to me is always, is that film, film is that pure like capitalistic venture of you're paying to go see a movie. You're paying uh, just to see one thing. You eliminate that. It will. There's nothing to me to fund everything else outside. You get rid of that, the entertainment industry will sink. It won't go away, yeah. but it will drop in terms of value immediately. Mm-hmm. If you eliminate um, the grandeur of cinema, you yeah. need to keep that. That's what I mean by keeping it a little separate. Because you got to keep movies up here and you got to keep TV down here. If TV comes up here, it's over. Movies, in terms of being this big thing, this important thing with the Oscars and all that. Yeah. They're done. Yeah. So basically, there'll still be movies, there'll still be theaters, but the dynamics will be completely different. They're no different than the Emmys. The Emmys mm-hmm. will become the big thing. And then um, the, and then the, the budgets will drop, like yep. for movies that can't all of them will. them, yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. can't, because you don't, because even though they're seeing like this movie, like say Bright, for example, it's huge on Netflix, it's doing well, 
Yeah. But we don't know how much money it's actually making. Well, they greenlit a sequel, so it can't be that bad. It can't be that again, bad. Again, but... I, I, this could all change. That's the thing, is mm-hmm. that you're, you're saying that like as things change and more people... Mm-hmm. Uh, are Netflix like services like Netflix become a digital distribution streaming becomes the go to de facto way to watch content. If mm-hmm. that actually ends up happening, you'll see subscription prices go up. You'll see, cause the only reason Netflix mm-hmm. has such low subscription costs are just because they're trying, they've been trying to break into the mm-hmm. market for so long. And obviously they're successful yeah. now in terms of uh, how much of the market they have. However, they need they need to keep growing because they have nothing else other than their service to go on. Mm-hmm. They're not Disney. They can't like they can't just be like we're Disney. We have a streaming service. Pay, mm-hmm. and they will right. And you'll give them a price and they'll do it eventually if if it goes that route. And yeah. it's now they're all doing that. So eventually it'll end up that way. But yeah, yeah. No, I mean just sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no. And I'll I'll just kind of finish just because we still yeah. gotta get Zach's opinion. Yeah, totally. um, <laughs> we're not done with Ryland's. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I was I was I was done. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> just like that's it. Yeah. Yeah, hmm? um, well, yeah no, but uh, I, yeah, it's just it's one it's constant. I don't think it, it will ever. I'm not a doomsday where I'm thinking like when I read reports and I'm like the movies are over, everything's gonna be on Netflix. I'm like. No. Well, it's like when television was being introduced. Exactly. Yeah. There's Back. always going yeah. to be a place for it. But yeah. my, my mindset is for filmmakers out there is like make your movies actually – if you want people to go to the cinema, make it cinematic. Yeah. You know, I, that's sort of yeah. my thing. It's like if you want – you need to get people an excuse to go to the movies. It's not just to see yeah. – because what we – like I said, the lines are being blurred in terms of what you can see on television and what you can see on film now yeah. in terms of special effects, in terms of epicness, in terms mm. of great stories – um yeah. so um filmmakers who want to make movies for the cinema they really got to really tackle that yeah. um to make it yeah. you you thing. have to get an experience at the theater that you cannot get at home exactly which is why uh complacency is what's going to is what would kill the the theater yes. and they are adapting because uh, it's not just with the tech they're they're trying always to have new tech in their mm-hmm. theaters mm-hmm. um and and it's a lot of that's on the directors like you say to implement like you know nolan's use of imax cameras and things like that mm-hmm. super important and then theaters are reacting in another way and having like uh, cineplex in canada as vip theaters that's bringing people out uh, who otherwise wouldn't because I it's agree. like wow this is a whole experience that i don't get at home i get comfort of home sort of but i get like service, service and all this other great stuff that so at the end of the day people will go see movies they're not even that jazzed about just because they want to go out exactly and that's the smart response and i i think i i, I don't know it's just too doomsday i think it's just gonna adapt no to and, I, and i don't like to yeah. me like i don't think it will ever will get to that it's it's me but you can't be like naive about it or uh, no. blase about thing and mm-hmm. i'll be fine like you got to be aware of it and that's sort of what my thing is like i'm aware of this yeah. um but to me whenever people are like the cinema's gonna be gone in five years i'm like fuck off no yeah, it's not. yeah. yeah. I mean, no. it wouldn't be that quick if it did tv's gonna be... be dead before film because the internet is just becoming the well new cable TV. tv youtube yeah well, so stuff. you're saying cable yeah. Yeah. cable's yeah. done yeah. like the yeah. people are cutting cable all the time whenever people are oh the ratings are going down it's like because people have less cable yeah. That's why the ratings yeah. are going down. Yeah. Every well, if you think about it, we're consuming more content than ever before. However, mm-hmm. uh, cable TV ratings are going down, and uh, uh, theaters are seeing the low, uh, record low attendance. Right. In twenty five. There's years, a reason yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. So it's not that people are watching less; people are watching more. It's just where everybody needs to adapt. Yeah. And it, we're getting there. And, and that's pretty and much. I it. think that's the perfect place yep. to end it. And yeah. move it over to Zach. Would you see Joya <laughs> Noel in a theater? Um, well, <laughs> this is the yeah. I mean, I guess that's the question now, right? And, and to mm. put myself in a slot, I guess, because I mean, clearly, I think Jack liked it the least. I think that's fair to say. Uh, I didn't hear your opinion, so I... no. Well, that's where yeah. I was going to come in. Yeah. Is that I think I'm somewhere between Jack and what everybody else has said because you guys have been very enthusiastic and you liked it, Jack. But you no, I really liked but it. But you good. you had some big problems with the direction, and, and I and I and I agree with that. But I don't agree with it to the degree that you kind of put it out there. I, I agree that there's parts mm-hmm. that yeah, it felt a little plain, and it could have used a little boost and things like that for mm-hmm. sure. But I, I thought there were times where it was fine, and and not to mention that the story was enough too, like you guys were saying. Yeah, I think that's I think that stuff is is really good on its own. So I I, I do agree with you, but I I just I don't go the full I guess extent. Oh yeah, no, that's fair. So and... I would say I'm somewhere between. Uh, but I but I thought it was really good. I, mm-hmm, I did really yeah. enjoy it. I I mean I obviously knew about the Christmas truce. 
and all that and how much of an incredible event it was but it's it is cool to see it you know on the big screen or the big screen yeah. <laughs> on the tv screen yeah um but it would have been cool to see it on the big screen still because you get all the performances, you get yeah. the music, you get, you know, the, the cinematography. That's the thing about period costumes so always looks nicer on a larger screen. Yeah, that like mm-hmm. all that period piece stuff. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I think it would work on the big screen, but I agree that, yeah, okay, but there is times where it's like, yeah, you should have got this shot. You should have, you know, put this together a little better. Yeah. And, and yeah, and the sluggish, like... Yeah, I would say you're right. Like, it's it, to saying what Andrew was saying and stuff. Like, it is a little bit slow, but yeah, maybe the direction would have helped. Maybe you could have cut off a couple minutes, but I know it's not a long movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and I thought that, like, there wasn't a lot of moments where it's like, oh, that didn't need to be in there. Like, a lot of things did feel like, oh, you're servicing this moment and this moment. You could have maybe if you're really looking, but. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have cut too much out if it was a matter of that. Yeah, I don't even know what I would. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Like, So I think it, it, you would have to, yeah, you could make some of the direction a little better, but at the same time, I don't think it was, I guess what I'm saying is, I wouldn't say it was throughout the direction was, you know, needed a boost. I think it was just kind of parts mm-hmm. yeah. that it needed. No, that's fair. Yeah. That, that's kind of where I'm at. No, that's fair. But I thought it was really good. I, I do yeah. think it's it's a solid mm-hmm. movie, and it's and what I like about it most is that it is different than your average war film. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, there's some fighting, yeah, at the beginning, sure, because they have to establish it's a war yeah. and how it so, changed in that moment, you know, with this truce and stuff. But you know, yeah, it's, it's it stands out. There's a fun fact about that actually, and and you can correct me if I'm wrong because I think this is the only time that this has happened. Mm. But uh, the film was originally rated R in the U.S. And due to criticisms from Roger Ebert and his uh, review Mm. and his general criticisms, he was saying it definitely did not deserve that rating, that it deserved to be far lower. And uh, because of that, they actually changed the rating on the film to PG-13. Yeah, that's happened. Go go Mm. Ebert. I'm not sure. Like, I'd never heard that before. It's happened. It doesn't happen often. He was saying the whole point of this film isn't the violence and there's so little of the violence like mm-hmm. the violent element because the if you think about it it's only that beginning section and there's like uh one or two things peppered in but they're very minor it's not gory yeah um and then on top of that he, he was saying like the it's counter to the entire point of the film which yeah. is about this this like uh this human connection across uh terrible circumstances and it's mm-hmm. it's very much a different film it's not a war film no mm-hmm. yeah yeah there, so it's, do they even a, watch yeah. it or do they just like war movie yeah. or well yeah, yeah they're really right? with that. <laughs> so yeah that's just yeah, one of the things is that he actually managed to get it. Yeah. It, he's credited with getting this movie's rating changed. Nice. It has happened. There was a movie called Bully, which was the same thing, but oh, it was a documentary. Yeah. You've heard about it, right? Yeah. Where it's about, like, oh, the effects of bullying and stuff, and it was given an R rating. And honestly, I don't know if... Um, I feel like Ebert might have had a hand in that, too. I think Ebert was dead by then. Or was he? I, I he thought was. he was yeah. older than that. Um, I just so. remember... <sighs> Funny enough, um, that whole thing was satirized in uh, South Park where oh, uh, Kyle brought up a great point where he's like, if this movie is so important to see, why don't you upload it online for free? And oh, yeah. Silence. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh-huh. if this was so important for children to see and this needs to be seen, why won't you just put it up for free? And they're like, I'm sorry? What? <laughs> um, and basically yeah. kind of showing off, it's like, you only want more people to go see it because you want to profit off yeah, of it, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is sort of like showing the hypocrisy of, you know, they're kind of bullying people to show their movie about a bully. You know, yeah. that was sort of what they were kind of going off. I of. mean, there's two sides to that. Right? Cause yeah. I mean, at the, cause at the same time, I, I totally agree if it's educational, if it's yeah, something like, of that side where it's like the point is to educate you. Yeah. It shouldn't necessarily be art, and especially if it's intended to show kids yeah. and yeah. stuff mm-hmm. who well, are dealing I, with bullies. I think, oh, no, stuff. Yeah. It's I think really Ebert's, important to drop it. Yeah. Ebert's point was that it was, uh, it, it was something that younger, a younger audience should see because it mm-hmm. has important lessons in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It and and it's true, right? It's also historical and it, it has relevance to young people learning about history and, and learning the lessons from mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. he, he saw that importance and that's why he argued like, why are you just, like restricting yeah. it to adults it doesn't make any sense and it's not like Schindler's List where a lot of things are horrifying yeah that's different stuff. that's like, one that, where like you can't argue thing. you yeah. can say the same thing with that except that it's like horrific yeah. right yeah so like you it can kind of get it but it could be it could like 
give a kid nightmares, which you, that's mm. the test. Like, I leave think. that to the if parents. If a kid could get nightmares right. from the film, okay, maybe it deserves the higher rating. Right, and that makes sense. But, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, leave it to the parents if the parents want to show the kids. Totally, that's what happened to me. Yeah, know um, know your know your kid yeah. too, right? Yeah, my my mom oh, exactly, my mom had yeah. two films that she would show me um, that she was totally okay with showing me when I was a kid, and I was Schindler's List and Face Off. I saw Braveheart. <laughs> Those are the two. Face Off was okay. Apparently Braveheart was okay, mm-hmm. which yeah. I don't know why. Ter- Terminator was okay for me. My mom watched that with me. She's like, okay, we can watch the Terminator. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like seven or eight. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Dang. Um, but yeah, Ebert's always was always um, critical of the MPA. Oh, sure. of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, because he believed in, you know, the, the like movies as art as well. Yeah. yeah. And he, he, you know, access. Access to film. And that's mm-hmm. what they're you know their role you could argue is kind of restricting access to film but they obviously frame it as yeah. protection so it's it's like two sides of the argument yeah. so he argue i i think his views are just a little it, put it in the hands of the parents don't don't yeah. uh, just limit it he's even had the argument of like this film should have been rated higher Mm-hmm. Um, like he's like, no kids should see this. Um, yeah, he has had that. Like, yeah, because oh, he said that for seven. He yeah, said should it should be NC seventeen. Yeah, and he, which like, I don't agree with. Yeah, well, he's mm-hmm, just like, if there was an example for a R, movie. I presume. Yeah. 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 Okay, I don't think it needs to be NC seventeen. No. NC seventeen is a ridiculous. Most yeah, of the yeah. violence takes place off screen in that movie, anyway. It does, but it's showing you. It's just like I guess horrific. The, the idea. Well, that, it it is, but I think yeah. R is heavy enough for yeah, that. Yeah, I, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think the fact that it's horrifying. If you put it in the hands of the parents, it's the best you can do. Yeah. But parents, some parents don't want that. They want to be told what the rating is, unfortunately. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, compl- it's just irresponsible. Because that's why we have ratings to begin with. Is because parents would complain, like, why wasn't I told this movie's bad and yeah, all that shit? Yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of doing the actual research for themselves. Yeah, instead of just knowing what your kids yeah. are doing and what they're seeing and mm-hmm. knowing their content that they're some, consuming. Some people just show up to a theater and they go, like, what's playing? And just, they just pick a movie. I remember at Cineplex. Just, just wait for... I know I had to divert a few people from seeing things that... Pan's Labyrinth was a big see. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that they shouldn't bring their kids to. Yeah. It's well, not a children's like, fairy tale. You had to tell everybody they were coming in in droves, and it's like, listen, this is like not a kid's fairy tale. Bringing it in your two and a half tale. foot tall, it's, tall it's child, gruesome, and it's like, man. no, it's, it's pretty brutal. It's an adult fairy tale, and you shouldn't bring your kids in. But they, I'm, I'm trying. Some to of them brought them in, and they yeah. paid yeah. the price. Yeah. That's, that, yeah. that's one of those things that. That's reminiscent of when I would go on the internet movie database when yeah. they still had the comment section open. Oh, yeah. And pe- <laughs> oh, people would troll, and they would say, I want to show my my seven-year-old a Serbian film or right. inside. Yeah. What's it about? <laughs> What's going on in this film? Is it okay for them to see? Is right. it culturally enriching? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, it, it's um, <laughs> you know, there's babies in it, so it's fine. Oh, oh, my oh. oh. <laughs> wow! Uh. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> woo, woo, woo! Yeah, yeah. The, 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 anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. like PG thirteen seems like a uh, uh, good rating for this film. Yeah. Seems like it yeah, got it right the yeah. second time. Uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's it's interesting to hear uh, your opinions on it. That mm-hmm. uh, I, I agree with most of what you guys are saying. Even Jack's like just because I just don't notice that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I could agree. I I could see that. Yeah, I just don't. I, it's so not noticeable. For I'm me. more interested about um, you mentioned pacing, and I don't think you've really kind of elaborated. Pacing it was it was the fact. So it's hard. Yeah, I agree with Rylan as well on that. Like it kind of had to be paced that way because every mm-hmm. day they were coming up with new reasons to kind of extend this ceasefire, and you kind of that naturally extends these cuts and these and uh, how long the film seems to go since mm. the ceasefire starts. Right. So I kind of think it's, it's, you'll occasionally have a cut where you'll think like, Oh, the ceasefire was supposed to be over, but no, it's still, it's still going. Uh, it, we're just moving on to, uh, you know, the French side right now, or, or mm. we're looking at some stuff going on on the, on the uh, Scottish side. So it's, it was more just stuff like that where I, I thought, like, maybe it was just my memory of it. I thought, no, it's supposed to be over now. Maybe that's more on me oh, than okay. anything else. Oh, okay. um, but, but yeah, where I think, oh, this is supposed to be over now. Oh, no, wait, it just keeps going. So that's where maybe I felt it a little bit more this time. I forgot mm-hmm. to mention a couple things, actually, too. Um, I, I enjoyed the quick, like, comedic bits in yeah. between. Obviously, it helps oh, yeah. with making a little art light hard, but I thought they were good. I thought every time that they would come up with 
just the little comedic parts like with the wife's picture and like the german like i like them yes, fighting over yeah. the cat that was yeah. hilarious mm. and the uh and oh and then there was of course the trenches towards the end where it's like you know you should probably come to our trenches oh, yeah, we're gonna was... get obliterated it's it's like <laughs> scary like, but it's like yeah well, we're gonna hilarious. return the fire so you should probably come to ours now yeah. like, that was great <laughs> yeah and i also the other thing i liked is i really liked the um the brother, the Scottish brother or whatever, who was still like pissed because I believe it was well, like, yeah, because right. they killed his 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 brother and, mm-hmm. and he, like, was he can't let that go. And 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 that makes a lot of sense because yeah. you would have had those people who were like not down. Like, yeah, yeah, and you and you look at them and you're like, no, he killed. He very one of them or all of them are responsible for killing the person I love. Yeah, and, and, and he wasn't alone in that either because like they're going through the letters at the end and yeah. there's the one in French that's yeah. based, that's basically yeah. just like screw them all. I'm staying in my trench. Like, yeah, <laughs> and and. The thing is, too, that I really liked about it is a lot of movies would have t- done that. They would have taken that character, but then they would have had a change. They would have had him, like, have or a, a they, brave heart, but then he actually yeah. doesn't at all, and at the end, he shoots the guy, and it, yeah. it's it's like... Or yeah. they would have over-dramatized... Dramat, dramat, I can't say the word. Dramatized. Dramatized him. Right. Um, Like, he would have... Maybe they could have done a standard duel where he's sh- about to shoot him and yeah. all that. They didn't, which no, actually, no. I will say that is... I liked... No. He was just standing It was like a reveal, yeah. almost, yeah. that showed yeah. him, and he, like... Oh, it's like, and, oh, and I, I, I did really like i did really like that yeah. um i really liked that a yeah. lot and i liked how they just didn't change his heart yeah. or anything yeah. stupid like i'll mention that. Yeah, one this ain't no persona yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll mention one character he's such a minor character but he's the only one i did not care for mm-hmm. i'm like i could you could have used another rewrite because okay. <laughs> which was the Scottish main general, like the oh, one okay. who would come in and yell at everybody. Yeah, but he, um, I think he was just there to be a caricature, uh, to yeah. be there to be the guy that is like yeah. from up up top, yeah. going, "What the hell are you guys well, doing? Yeah, What's the, wrong the, with you?" Because the movie's that. trying to yeah. stick yeah, it to the higher problem. ups at some parts yeah. as well. So I mean, yeah. they're kind of they're not necessarily portrayed in the most. Oh no no no, light. no no no! I'm not saying like portrayed in the, how he was portrayed and all that. And actually, I thought his the payoff with them dicking with him about taking the long way that was awesome yeah, was yeah. great um, yeah. i was so happy with that scene it was more or less when you compared it to the because they i did realize with the ending they cut to all three major people or, or higher ups and seen how they all reacted you had like the uh, the french with um guy with his dad who's the priest and all that yeah um i like that scene a lot mm-hmm. there was with the the germans at the very end on the train which yeah. i thought was really good yep. too yeah um mm-hmm. i just seen both they, they both well, had scott's kind of had that with the priest though with the priest yes yeah. um that was good but with that one general i felt like he was the most stock written oh okay in terms of his dialogue sure. every like all of his i'm like you could yeah, but if you're going to have an angry yelling guy, you're going to give yeah. it to the Scotsman. I, I, yes. Yeah, not every movie is going to be full no, no, metal no, jacket. No, no, no. no. I'm Scottish, so I'm allowed no, no, to say that, that. No, I know. I know. But no, that's fine. Um, it's more or less just I thought he was, um, I don't know. I one-dimensional? He, he, the most one-dimensional. Yeah. Thank you. He was the most one-dimensional out of the entire movie, which had so many three-dimensional characters. Yeah. He kinda... I think just naturally because he doesn't hang out at any point. Like, he just comes in, is like, do your job, and then comes back and is like, do your job. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. he has no, uh, there's no other point for him other than to be the reality check. That's yeah. his, that but is I know, his I know, job. But, I know, but the other two, like, when they went to the other main higher-ups, they were kind of given a moment where they paused for a second, but they still went on with their duties. The, the, he never had... I felt like they were building him up to almost, like, during that moment, where, hey, shoot him, shoot him. And I guess that's one of the few things is, like, yeah, he could have had maybe a slight moment of, like, he sees why they can't all do something like that. I don't know. Maybe he's reaching in too much into this, but... Mm. I don't know. Like I said, it's a very minor thing. He was there. He was gone, and that was it. But yeah. I, I just wanted. I was like, yeah. Out of all the characters, I think he was the, like I said, the most one dimensional, the most stock. Yeah. yeah. Out of mm-hmm. like the entire movie, which did not have any, and mm-hmm. so that's why I'm like, he, he yeah. sort of stuck out a little bit for me. But well, yeah, I, I love yeah. how this treated and it humanized uh, all sides. Right. It that's what I. Cool. Yeah. That's what I yeah. absolutely loved more than anything. Because about you're this just movie. so used to seeing caricatures, yes. especially yeah. for the ones who lost. Right. They yes. are always caricatures. They're always going to be. Uh, you know, and I like how they play that at the beginning. They're saying all the motivations, like they do this, they do that. They're these mm-hmm. awful mm-hmm. people, but well, like, yeah, cause there's, the... there's bad on all sides and there's good. Exactly. There's good well, yeah. Cause they're, you're trained to think of your enemy as not human as only yeah. kind of this embodiment of this evil that must be extinguished. Yeah. I and mean, that's the point of propaganda anyways. But you, in this situation, they realize that it's all, hey, we're all just people here. Yeah, we all have the same problems. And I love like the letter mm-hmm. saying like, yeah, you know, uh, we're gonna go uh, sing that song with the that the Scots taught us, and uh, 
you know, where we'll go curse those bastards who are all sitting there telling us to, to slug it out here, you know, mm-hmm. like screw those guys. Like it's just the realization that like, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's not us it's like we're fighting it's someone else's people. war yeah these here. are other people who've got this mm-hmm. problem not us we're all in the same boat yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i think good war films or good films that have that as a topic they focus in on that they focus in on uh the front lines being the the soldiers being very similar mm-hmm. in a lot of ways are all all having motivations that are similar because they're similar similar people they're all human they all have that human connection mm-hmm. and, and that it's more like the big scope well yeah Dunkirk's i mean it's the opposite where it's like almost like this ghost or you never see like yeah, the yeah. germans or anything but it's like yeah. this presence that, that that's evil. super cool <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> film was trying to say something so so totally different though yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. it was trying to like focus there's a reason it was trying to focus in on the the heroism of sure. of the yeah. of the people of mm-hmm. regular civilians and just to and impose like that, the and... feeling of being utterly trapped in this yeah, hellscape yeah. Mm-hmm. claustrophobic yeah they sure. wanted you to f- yeah he basically wanted to shoot it so you feel like you're trapped on that beach you're so. surrounded yeah. by an enemy you can't see or defend against yeah. basically mm. this movie did actually um, remind me I had a few callbacks to um Paz of Glory at times oh, okay. okay um particularly with um. You know the soldiers. You know whether or not they should go fight or not. The, kind of adding some yeah, humanity to yeah. it, and also with the song sequence as well. At the end, especially. at the end, especially. Oh my god! Um, that yeah. that that had a little bit of a connective tissue. I well, would pa- say. see, Paz of Glory though. I mean, that's Stanley Kubrick. I mean, yeah. that film is shot beautifully. Oh, yeah. like, like whenever I watch Paz of Glory, like it was like what 50 59, 59, 58, 59, 58, 59 50, something, yeah, something like, like that. that. It, it looks like it could have been made today. Like it's yeah. ridiculous. Like all the the trench scenes and stuff, mm-hmm. and it looks so good. It's and it's just and, like, and yeah. I know what you mean. And yeah. I, it does go to like, oh yeah, well, what makes it stand the test of time and all that? It certainly helps quite a bit. Oh yeah. But I think that at the same time, again, going back to what I said, it's you know, there, yeah, there's parts that could have been elevated. I think there's a lot of things. Oh yeah, and too, and like though. I said, the the filmmaking part of it, if that's really <sighs> my only, and it's again, yeah. it's not a knack. Like I said, it was bad. Yeah. Um, I was just underwhelmed by it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to me, like every, everything else was again, I'm overly praising it. Like I thought the story and just seeing the humanity shown from all three sides mm. yeah. and showing that yeah. it, it's just, it's nice yeah. to see Germans not, yes, <laughs> not looked at as, and Evil. not portrayed as just this, like, like this figure that yeah. shoots you, yeah. you know, like <clears throat> they actually had personality. <clears throat> you liked them. Yeah. That was such a hard thing to do to make you like a world war one or world war, especially world war two German mm-hmm. is a hard thing to do, but there are good people everywhere. Right. So you got to yeah. think that it's not everybody. There are like the individual soldiers who are basically just getting screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also liked uh, Daniel Brühl's character too, how he like revealed to like, He's kind of crazy things. The fact that he's Jewish. I was literally about to say that. And I he's love like, that moment. And it's like, oh man, you're going to hate your country in a yeah, you know, future, years. right? Like, Less oh than man. That. And then, and then on top of that, and then he reveals like basically that what his wife's French. Yeah. Which is like, and yeah. You like, just think of the future for him is bad. It's just bad. It's yeah. like, fuck. Like, but then you're, here yeah. you are like as a Lieutenant. For, well, like, yeah. He's like, like, I'm good. Jewish and I have a French wife. It's, like, uh, it's, it's almost Maybe. better if you don't get out of this one. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe you should stay with the French. Uh, actually yeah. just go further, go with the Scots. You'll yeah. get further away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I, I yeah. No, just all that stuff the, when they're playing soccer, just all that stuff was, I'm like, this is great. Like, mm-hmm. I've never seen this in a movie before. Yeah. I've never seen this in war films before. We need more stuff like That's this. That's why I like the film so much, just because it is really unique. You've never yeah, seen that. Yeah. And World War Two is so uh, depressing mm-hmm. that... This is World War One. Sorry, film. did I say yeah. two? Yeah. yeah you Sorry, uh, World War One is uh, just so depressing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I it, there's That's why there's... There's not a lot of films made is set in World War One. Like yeah. there's a, there's there's there are there, but you uh, compare it to World War Two. Oh, everybody. Well, because World War Two is strategy based, which is better for making movies. Yeah, it's whereas more cinematic. Whereas World War One um, is just attrition. Kill, yeah, all yeah. kill all the exactly. guys. Kill all the guys. Exactly. That's why it was so depressing because it was just <laughs> death. Died, okay, yeah. then there's now yeah. we charge and there's more death and then we wait and then there's it was it, there was never much to it yeah. other than that. Mm. Pretty much every almost all the World War One movies that I've seen have always had a no man's land set yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. You, know, you have to that's you have war. to yeah like, so whether like, it's war horse or yeah. as recently as wonder woman and all that right which yeah. that was a great scene that's um, the reason why so many world war one films are set they're set 
around usually just the periphery they're not like focused in on just combat because yeah. mm-hmm. you just wouldn't be able to fill a whole movie with that otherwise you'd just be showing the same thing i was exactly. wondering it's just it. like melee for two hours it yeah be- well yeah. like and that's that's like scary as hell if you think about it like mm. that's why it's so depressing and that's why i do think it is interesting to explore these other aspects a bit more because you want to see like the effect that this has on on people yeah mm. there was a while i was wondering if uh, diane kruger was going to be a german wonder woman for a bit i was like she's just gonna go yeah, on no hands the land is... the bla- braces on oh there you go she's like hold on a minute i'm gonna take care of this yeah and she just comes out she Which just is... she they have that shot of her climbing like the ladder yeah and stuff and it's like oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that yeah. was that jokes in the side that scene is still great in wonder woman yeah oh it's, it's like really my, i think it's one of my it's the scene like yeah it's like the best scene in the i world. gotta watch that movie again though. i do well, yeah. she, i still need to see it again yeah it's good yeah it's good um but yeah i i mean yeah, it's 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 a film. I think uh, I guess we'll just kind of do final thoughts now. But uh, I, I I'll pass it off to Alex first. Um, do you think it's uh, underrated or people should see it? Or? I do think both. It's underrated and people should see it. People should educate themselves on a little bit of World War One history, mm-hmm, yeah. especially this particular point in time. World War One at that time was known as the Great War. Yeah. Not in terms of cool, but in terms of yeah. size and scope and the amount of countries that were involved. Because mm-hmm. up to that particular point in time, in terms of military campaigns and war, the world had not seen yeah. anything like this. Mm-hmm. And the the brutality that happened, especially in the early part of the war, like like I said, if you listen to Dan Carlin's six-part hardcore history on World War One, there was something that just broke my heart. And it, this goes back to the pre-modern man Mm -hmm. when when people lived a lot simpler and when someone died it was a huge tragedy for everyone involved yeah like just someone in your village Mm -hmm. when they died a lot of people were in mourning yeah nowadays eh, it's you i don't think there's that much humanity shown yes it's sad when someone dies i'm not denying that yeah but i think back then there was a lot more of an impact on people so, yeah, there was more know. community back then. There was definitely was more community. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was a smaller communities, a lot more sense of community. Yeah, I think now because everything's so big, yeah. and and that's that's the start of that, the Great War with mm-hmm. like just such a massive loss of life, and, mm-hmm. oh. and de- that's the start of uh, de- like that's part of desensitization and how it how it kind of changed everybody's perspective on this yeah. stuff. So much loss that you have to cope with it and well, yeah, cope just with it by not desensitization just kicks in as a, as a survival mechanism yeah. after yeah. a while. Yeah. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. My English teacher, I don't know if he got the saying from someone else, but back in high school, he said, when you see so much death, you become immune to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so de- desensitization. And there was a point in world war one. It was very early on. The Germans were marching West. They had gotten to Belgium and I think machine guns had been introduced very recently yeah. at that mm-hmm. point. I think it was the Russo-Japanese War, <laughs> where you see some of that. And when the Germans got, uh, I think it was to the, the outskirts of Belgium, there were two machine gun nests set up, and the Germans would, would march in. Like the generals and the, the mm-hmm. people leading the campaign, they were thinking of the old school way, you just march in. Yeah, they were destroyed. They were cut down just one after the other after the other, just like a war of attrition. Mm -hmm. They were just getting mowed down. It was so sad to hear not not even just to imagine, but just to hear that that loss of life. And these generals are just they're stuck in the past. Yeah, it was terrible. They don't know how to react. Yeah. And they don't know how to plan around that because it had war had changed right. That happened in World War Two as well. Happened well, in uh, Vietnam with, as with, well. With, uh, yeah. with, Vietnam. with Blitzkrieg and, and the, the the takeover of Europe, that's basically what happened. They didn't know how to fight back against a modern, a revolutionary uh, style of war, and exactly. it cost them big time. Yeah, mm-hmm. Blitzkrieg was meant to get around the trench warfare, yep. just not even to get in to the point where trenches would be jugged, just mow right over yep. and keep going. That was, that was the brilliance of, of military planning when it came to Blitzkrieg. Yeah, and exactly, and people—it's that's the problem with people being stuck in their ways and not adapting to that—is yes. that you lose. Yes, and uh, you see this horrible loss of life, that's and then it leads to stories like this where it's just like you know, uh, it's it's sad. It's just sad. It's sad, and and a lot of the soldiers, like a, a lot of military generals, French and English, 
because they were still stuck in their old ways, they were fired. Like they were, you're gone, you're out. Again, you got to listen to hardcore history to to understand just how deep that goes. And because it was such a great war, it was a terrible war, even early on, so many people dead within the first year or two. Yeah. So to have something like this happen, it it's really a psychological relief. It's a lifting, it's a burden mm-hmm. where it it's just this little blossom of humanity, even just for a brief moment, even just for a few days at this point in time, mm-hmm. where yes, they're enemies. Yes, there's there's political reasons why it got to this point, but where music comes in and they can all put down their guns and just have a moment or two together. Yeah. It's beautiful. I just, it's a sappy message, but it, yeah, like to think about it of how, um, like just, yeah, how romantic of an ocean that is, mm-hmm. but it does hit home it's because so it is one of those. Needed. Yeah, you just want to feel that. You want to believe that that is that is still exists in our world. That 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 people have that common unifier, and it can still happen. And the fact that it's true and that did happen, it's it makes you hopeful. And I think that as hokey as something that that like that can sound on, like when said out loud, it's it's reassuring and it's something we need. Yeah, and a credit to the writers for the the dramatization for bringing in those little bits, like with the the alarm clock. And yeah. the the French wife like the that hu- humanization broke me right there element the yeah. elements where they they made all these different people human and yeah. alarm clock for you know for that guy and they found ways to make everybody human yeah these yeah. little subplots I, I really think that that helped to to bring home the the beautiful part of that event yeah yeah it's good mm-hmm. uh, Jack uh, do you think this is something worth uh, that they should see that people should see. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think this is definitely, uh, I think everyone should see this movie and know this story and just see that, you know, as we, as Alex alluded to, this, this is a very, has a very hopeful message. And I think the yeah. world needs more of this, especially now. Um, so sk- skip Battlefield 1 and watch this movie? Go straight to it, yeah. Okay. I was actually just thinking of Battlefield 1. Um, yeah, and um, there's actually a good line in this movie um, that kind of, I think, really sums up again what you were saying alex which is um diane kruger mentioned uh she wants to go see you know the her man and mentions uh the i I guess the officer who gives her like the pass says that uh oh you only want to be for like one day one day that's it it's like a minute to you is not much but a minute this minute to me is a lot longer than your minute. Yeah, I yeah. think her, her quote mm-hmm. was, our seconds are longer. Right. So, like, I couldn't remember the exact no, line. No, it's our minutes are longer. Or, right? Sorry, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yes, our minutes are longer. Um, That's and I feel saying. like that is almost sort of like the main thing that kind of goes across the entire movie, you know, of like all these characters of just stretching this out this as long as possible. Yeah. Cause if you think about it, it's like a day ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yet yeah, it's not long. this little moment um, has been played out and stretched out where they'll remember this. Like, Inception uh, had another good line where like positive memories outweigh and outlast and have more of a powerful impact than negative memories Mm -hmm. um, because they affect you more. Right. Um, And yeah, no, this is uh, overall, like I said, this movie is really good um, beside my little, let's be honest, a little filmmaking snobbery a little bit. Let's be honest here. (laughs) But we Um, we need that perspective though. though. Yeah, no, (laughs) we definitely do. But I definitely see that. Because as soon as I, as soon as I brought that up, I saw Alex just laugh. Like, cause he felt like I, I think he got the impression. I was, I was saying like, oh, Jack, you're just like a film snob, okay? Just stop talking. No, no but it's, but, but it, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's, it was meant yeah. to be like, no, I see where you're coming from. But as a person who doesn't, who can't see that in movies as easily, it's just. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just because um, I, I don't have that much exposure to that. Yeah, anyway. but, but overall, like I said, uh, the movie I think is, is really was really good. I thought the story was great. The acting's great. Um. Yeah, no, it was a really solid movie. Um, I would definitely say it's underrated in terms of, you know, I like also like seeing movies that actually um, go the extra mile. And the one thing I will say they really went the extra mile for is the languages, the fact that they had three different languages. Uh, yeah. um, and actors who could do and speak, who speak the language yeah, like, yeah. properly. Yeah. Like, well. honestly, that is a big turnoff for a lot of audiences here because they don't want to read subtitles. Yeah. Um, that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and that's probably, well, that's another big reason. Well, yeah. uh, you got to keep in mind, like, and in, in, it didn't make its budget back. Like, that's including Europe as well. Yeah. So, 
no mm. one likes people sub- who actually know the languages are still kind yeah of like, no one likes subtitles it. but it's like i haven't seen anything kind of like this honestly it's funny enough since inglorious bastards and the two actors are both in it so yeah it was pretty cool um but yeah no overall i'll just i'll finish up uh yeah no i i would say go see it uh you know i think i can definitely see why people have this as an annual christmas movie as well because uh, mm. it is it does what it does what all christmas movies should do which is um really lighten it up have a positive give, give message you hope. give you yeah. hope yeah because that's yeah. in the end like it's all about being together and yeah. you know forgetting about the bad times and just you know having you know a joyous time and i think that did it really well and that's savoring the good times when you can get them yeah, yeah. exactly that's you know? hugely important exactly mm-hmm. yep and i think that that out of all the things this movie did really well it mm. really executed that perfectly is that hopeful message of like yeah. even you know you're in the it did work. justice to the to the source yes uh, the true events yes and um story wise and acting wise i thought they really did a really good job on that so mm. yeah no that's my thought hey rylan yeah definitely um. underrated definitely see it uh it's a powerful um historical story it's a it seems like a pretty good uh, uh fictionalized rendering of it here um yeah, I would definitely, I would watch it again. Um, not uh, not imminently. Uh, I'm honestly even still now trying to, still finishing kind of dissecting this one in my head a little mm-hmm. bit. But yeah, no, it would definitely be one that I would uh, would pull out and watch again because there's a lot of uh, a lot of food for thought in yeah. it. A lot of things to take away. I mean, we've discussed most of them already. Um, I guess, yeah, it, it, it's a, it becomes a message of really kind of what's important in life um and if and humanizing everybody um basically if you have enemies in life it's like why why are they your enemies are they just because you've been told they're that that they are and i guess one more thing that you could take away from this is sing more you'll make friends Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah play an instrument yeah you you could just hum if you can't (laughs) sing you know if you have a, a you know you don't feel like singing but you could always get involved yeah and zach Shoya Noel is very swell. God damn it. That's what I gotta say. (laughs) That's what I gotta say. Uh, No. I I think we have a contender for worst pun so far. (laughs) Yeah, that's our Serbian film moment right here. Is that Is that even a pun? It's just a rhyme. Like that's that's what I'm going for. You spoke, so it's terrible. Oh, okay. Um. Sure. Uh, Insert that crowd. Um, no, yeah, I think it's no. I, I do think it's a really good movie. As I you know mentioned before, I, I do see Jack's points um, about uh, you know the direction at points. It's it could be a little more up to par, but I do think there's some great scenes too. I actually really like the stuff at night. I like the mass uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Those mm-hmm. scenes I thought were really well done in that regard. Um, but yeah, I think that there was obviously like other scenes, maybe in the trenches and stuff, that could have been a little more fine tuned. But um, but overall, yeah, I mean, I really liked it. I thought the story was solid, even though I knew the story, uh, you know, with the performances and the music and things like that, it, it really elevated it. So, yeah, mm. I think it's a, it's a sexy movie for it's sure. And also, I don't, I don't know if I'd watch this at Christmas. That was the other thing I was going to say. Like, yeah, you could. But it, it really yeah. it really is a war movie. I mean, it's it, kind of. It's one where it could go both ways just because yeah. it has that Christmas message it, and it is literally Christmas that brings them together. But sure. at the same time, it has more to it than just Yeah, no, it, yeah, it could definitely, yeah. I wouldn't say it's exclusively a Christmas movie. No, definitely no. more of a war movie than yeah. a Christmas a downer, movie by far. It's, it's a bit of a Exactly, downer, yeah, it's not, it's, so. it's, not, it's not your typical heartwarming holiday film, but yeah. it, it does of, inspire a lot though. of the messages and sentiment that is so prevalent at the season. So it, while yeah. this is one that can be enjoyed year round i think Mm. it does have its place in christmas as well yeah Yeah, i think it does in a way like it is heartwarming to see interactions between all these characters and all all these all these german scottish and and french men right because it's like like it's 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 to see that as something you don't normally see and it does make you feel good it does warm your heart so it does have that aspect to it it just also has the aspect where uh, they have the part where they're killing each other. Mm-hmm. So that's not, that's the opposite of that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I guess, I guess it depends what you take away at the end of the day. Cause yeah, it yeah. is a little bit depressing at the end of the day when they're like, no, we got to go back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I mean this movie, this movie though. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a downer and it, it didn't really, you know, warm me up and 
you know, make me really happy like Black Christmas did. Oh, yeah. It's a oh, very happy boy. movie. Boy. That I mean, that makes me. Christmas movie. It's so good. Just yeah. gets the warm fuzzies going. Oh, I watch it every year, you know, during <laughs> Christmas. I mean, that, that gets me. Hey, some people love Die Hard, you know. So, oh, Die there's Hard. A lot of, there's a lot of killing movie. in that movie. So. Great movie. It warms your heart. You know? Welcome yeah. to the party, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it's Christmas slogans. All right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up. And uh, next we have who, who's next? It's uh, yeah, you, Alex. Yeah, he right? is. He is Alex. Maybe it's it's your movie next. I don't might, know why you guys are looking be. at me. You can all help me because you probably all know. <laughs> we like no, to, that's we, Tom. No, we got. So, we, we like to see. You str- oh, it's Tom Nook from Animal Crossing. Is yeah, that no okay. one can help? I would love to watch Tom Nook's pick for <laughs> any gamers out there. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so Alex, it's your movie. Have you you've. Uh, decided right do you want to share or not share all i'm going to share is that there's a similar theme or pardon me similar melody to this film and my film and melody yeah melody Ooh. Uh, a bit of a song to it you, okay. you'll, you'll hear it and you'll be like ah okay <laughs> i'm gonna be listening now i'm gonna be uh just uh, i'm gonna be paying close attention okay. to that uh now i'm gonna be listening to every damn song <laughs> 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 all right so until next time uh, Alex, you want to take us out? It's your show. No, <laughs> I fucked up the intro. You're gonna fuck up the outro. You're gonna fuck up the outro. All right, too. I'll just say outro, yo. Merry Christmas. <laughs>